Hey guys, I'm John Setzler. Welcome back to the Man Cave for another episode, a new episode of Man Cave Meals. Today we're going to start a process of making some homemade New York style pizza. We're going to be cooking this on the Kamado Joe Classic Grill using the pizza porta. So let's get started. We're going to get started mixing our dough. I've got a six quart tub that I use here and I'm going to add 320 grams of water that's at about 95 degrees and then I'm going to add 14 grams of sea salt and I'm going to swirl that around just enough to get that salt dissolved. And then I'm going to add 1.2 grams of active dry yeast. And if you don't have a scale that can measure that, that's just a little bit over a quarter of a teaspoon. And I'm going to let this sit for a couple of minutes and I'm going to swirl that around just to get that yeast dissolved. Once I've got that yeast dissolved, I am going to add 300 grams to start with of a high protein bread flour here. And I'm, today I'm using King Arthur's bread flour and I'm going to mix that just to get that completely combined. And once I have that completely combined, I'm going to add another 100 grams of that same flour, which works out to a total of 500 grams. And we're working on about a 64 or 65% hydration level here, so I'm going to mix this by hand until we get the rest of that flour completely combined. And once we have all of that combined, we're just going to put the lid on this dough tub and we're going to let this rise at room temperature for two hours. Okay, we've been rising here for two hours and I have removed this dough ball to a floured surface and I'm going to add a little bit more flour to the top of it and I'm just going to shape this kind of loosely into a ball here and we're going to divide this three ways. This is enough dough to make three pizzas. So we're just going to roughly cut this into thirds just like that. And I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to shape each one of these into a dough ball of its own just by turning it and folding under until we have a nice smooth surface across the top. Just like that. So I'm going to do that to each of these. And then I'm going to cover each of these with a light dusting of flour. And then I'm going to put these on a tray and I'm going to cover them with plastic wrap. And they're going to go in the refrigerator for anywhere from 48 to 72 hours. And in this case, this is uh, Tuesday night. So I'm going to be cooking these on Friday night. So it's going to be close to 70 hours or so in the refrigerator. So we'll be back at that time to shape this and in the meantime we're going to make some New York style pizza sauce. Next thing we're going to do is make some sauce and I have here one can of this Cento brand San Marzano whole tomatoes. So we're going to dump that into our food mill. If you don't have a food mill you want to put these in a blender and just pulse it a couple of times enough to get the tomato broken up and that's it. And if you're using a food mill I recommend using the coarse grinding plate. And after we've got that through the food mill, we're just going to set that aside and we're going to get a saucepan and we're going to dump that into the saucepan. We're going to turn this on to medium high heat and to this we're going to add 20 grams of extra virgin olive oil and that's about one and a half tablespoons. We're going to add one clove of garlic that I have run through the microplane grater to get that minced up nicely. We're going to add eight grams of fine sea salt and eight grams is about one and a half teaspoons. We're going to add three tenths of a gram of dried oregano. That's about a quarter of a teaspoon. We're going to add four tenths of a gram of chili flakes, your red pepper flakes, that's about a quarter of a teaspoon also. And then we are going to add 15 grams of sugar. And 15 grams of sugar is roughly a tablespoon. So we are going to combine that and we're going to bring this kind of to a heavy simmer. We're going to reduce this a good bit. So it's going to take just a little while. We're going to thicken this up nicely. 
After we get this to a simmer, we're going to let it simmer here for 15 to 20 minutes, and we're going to stir this occasionally, and we'll be back to have a look at it when it's thickened up. Okay, we've gone, I think, about 17 or 18 minutes here. And as you can see, this has reduced a good bit. So I'm going to turn the heat off and move this off the heat, and we're going to let it cool. Okay, I've let that mostly cool off, and then I funneled it off into a mason jar. And I'm just going to put a lid on that, and we're going to put it in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. Okay, I've got a fire lit in the fire bowl of the Kamado Joe Classic, and I've got my accessory rack up high with both halves of the heat deflector on here, and i got a couple of copper tees that we're going to use for spacers. And instead of cooking on the pizza stone tonight, I am going to cook on the baking steel. So uh, this guy gives really excellent pizza results. So I'm going to set the pizza porta in place here, and then we'll let the grill warm up. If you're not already familiar with the pizza porta, this is what it is. It sits right on top of the base of the Kamado Joe grill, and then the lid just comes down on top, just like that. And you close the top vent all the way on the Kamado Joe, and then you open the vents on the side, on each side of the pizza porta to create your airflow. And that gives you the ability to open this door, and with the pizza peel, we slide our pizza in there onto that baking steel and cook without having to open the dome and it keeps our keeps all of our heat intact there at the top level so we're going to let this guy warm up and with this configuration with both of these side vents fully open on the pizza porter this thing will come up to 600 degrees or better which is about where we want to be for this cook okay i've taken one of our balls of pizza dough and put it on a floured pizza peel here and i've gone ahead and formed it out so we're going to put some of our pizza sauce on here and we're going to put a fairly thin coat of that and we're going to spread it all the way out to the edges. We're going to get it nice and close to the edge just like that and then I'm going to grate on with the microplane grater here just a very fine amount of Parmigiano Reggiano. Not too much and next we're going to put on just a little bit of freshly grated whole milk mozzarella. And then we're going to top it off with pepperoni. And now we're ready to go to the grill. All right, guys, our grill is up to temp, so I'm going to open the door on the pizza porta, and we're going to slide this bad boy right in there on that bacon steel. And we're going to let it cook. Okay, guys, we've been going about five and a half or six minutes now, and I believe we're about ready, so. Let's pull this out and have a look. Oh, that looks really good. I'm going to set this down here and we'll get a closer look at it. That looks beautiful. It's just now starting to rain, so I'm going to take this inside. We'll let it cool for just a minute and then we'll cut it. Okay, guys, I've cut this and let's have a taste. First of all, look at that crust. It is perfect. Absolutely amazing. Let's see what it tastes like. Guys, that's beautiful. And if I forgot to mention outside, the dome temp in our Kamado Joe was about 550, and my baking steel temp when I put this on was about 525 or so, according to the infrared thermometer. That cooked in somewhere between five and six minutes. Boy, that's got a beautiful flavor. And once again, I owe the credit to most of this to Ken Forkish's uh, The Elements of Pizza book. If you guys don't have that yet, you might want to grab it. You can make world-class pizza at home using those instructions like we've done here. So until next time, this is John Setzler with Man Cave Meals.